So this is a 1973 Honda CR250M Elsinore. Ooh, here's something cool. The shelf is all just stuff that I myself ruined. This is my Bell Star with fully custom paint. Hey, how's it going? I'm Eric. Welcome to my garage. Hey everybody, Ari Henning here, giving you a tour of my home garage here in Long Beach. I've got a little two car garage space. I say little, but it's the biggest space I've ever had to work in. I feel super fortunate to have it. And I've outfitted it pretty extensively to do mechanical work. Um, I've often got a project on the lift, often rebuilding a motorcycle, doing something else out here. So I do spend a lot of time out here in my garage and now I'm spending time here with you and I'm gonna give you a tour. We got some motorcycles on display, as you can see. Frankly, this is not particularly full. My personal street bike isn't here and these two motorcycles are reassembled, which is nice because they were taking up a lot more space when they were disassembled. How many motorcycles is too many? I don't work with a number. I work with a total displacement. And because if I have small displacement bikes, I can have lots of them. So this is a 1973 Honda CR250M Elsinore, and I just got it back together. It was fully rebuilt. I put a new crank in it, new engine bearings, uh, oversized piston board the cylinder, new wheel bearings, new swing arm bearings, new head bearings, all that stuff. Getting it ready for a friend of mine that is going to take it vintage motocross racing. So pretty cool. This bike will be back where it belongs, which is on the motocross track, even though it is pretty valuable and pretty historic. But hey, that's what Honda made them for. Another Honda bike is this CT90. As you can see, it is not currently fully assembled with an engine. I've got partial engine here, and I've got another partial engine here. This is the one we are actually going to work with. I had to swap the crankshafts uh, to make one functional engine to get this thing back on the road. I've also got this CRF 150R Mini Moto. So it's got slicks on it and modified suspension for ripping around go-kart tracks. I know that the perception is like, oh, the bikes are smaller, you're not going as fast. Wrong, it's so much fun. All the dynamics of riding are exactly the same. It's just cheaper and smaller and hopefully easier to access. Suma 50, which frankly is a bike I probably ride more than anything because I'll take it to go get coffee or ride it to the gym or just take it on errands because it's so convenient. Um, and then this is a Honda Spree. I got that from a neighbor who was just gonna, didn't know what to do with it. It doesn't run, they didn't want to get it fixed. So I was like, hey, I'll take it. Next up on the shelf is my little altar to the gods of speed. So this is a lot of uh, damaged engine componentry. This is a piston out of my RM85. Got a torched camshaft from a CBR that looks like it had a lack of lubrication. Uh, we've got a piston that is seriously scuffed up and overheated. The shelf is all just kind of stuff that I myself ruined. <laughs> Further on down the shelf, we've got a lot of shop manuals. Imagine that, a guy that hosts a show called The Shop Manual with a lot of books on his shelf. I rely on these things all the time. That's how I learn to work on bikes. Anytime I'm working on a new and unfamiliar motorcycle, I will acquire a shop manual so that I have a guide. If people read their workshop manuals, I'd be out of a job. <laughs> if you're like me and you're using your garage to juggle multiple projects, I've got some hot tips for you, some organizational tips that help keep your projects on course, keep things from getting lost. First and foremost, these goofy little lunch trays. I buy them off of Amazon. I use them all the time when I'm taking things apart. You take the nuts and bolts from the seat, you put them in a compartment, you write seat hardware. It's super helpful uh, rather than having things just spread out on your work surface, they're in their little compartments so they can't roll away. If whatever I'm working on is not going right back together, then I utilize Ziploc bags. Spencer and Zach both know I'm a big fan of collecting these things. I've got a whole drawer full of them and I will put parts in them. I will label them. I will put them in a box. They can go away later. If you're doing lots of projects, if you're having trouble staying organized, use trays of some sort and use Ziploc bags and a permanent marker and I promise it will help you a lot. Tucked in down here is my welder. It's a little MIG, a little 110 MIG. If you're interested in getting into MIG welding, I would definitely encourage it. You can spend an hour watching YouTube videos and a couple of hours practicing with some scrap metal and you'll get proficient. And then it just opens the door to being able to do so much more in the garage. Another one of my favorite pieces of equipment is this Coates 220 tire changer. This is a vintage item, it is manual and similar to the bike lift. People think they want an electric or pneumatic tire changer, but I'm telling you, manual, simple is best. Ooh, here's something cool. So recently I got to participate in a project with Yoshimura where we built and raced an R7 and Troy Lee Designs did the paint and he also painted my helmet. Look at this, this is my Bell Star with fully custom paint. I will continue to wear it 
At some point it will get retired to a shelf and just be a dope showpiece. But for now, I love the helmet and it looks awesome. So I'm gonna wear it. And you know what? Every garage has some favorite items in it and this is mine. I know, not very creative to say that my toolbox is the favorite thing in my garage, but like this is the nucleus of the shop right here. This is the foundation. I bought this when I was 16 from a used tool store. So it was old then and then I've had it for over 20 years. And the tools within it are special to me. A lot of them I bought when I was younger or I, I got them given as gifts from my father or I made them. So it's kind of a nostalgic thing for me to have this toolbox with things that I have held in my hands and used to fix things for the better part of two decades now. So not very original to say my toolbox is my favorite thing in the shop, but it is, and I'm an honest person. I'm just being honest with you. Here we go, here's some other mementos. I got some trophies, some championship trophies. 2015 ultra lightweight shootout that would have been on my CBR 300. 2016 ultra lightweight shootout out at Chuck Walla, 2016 350 Super Sport. So I should really hang these trophies up. Jen was over not too long ago and she's like, Ari, why aren't these up on the wall? I've got them by the wall where I want them to hang. I just haven't gotten around to actually hanging them yet. So that is a tour of my home garage. You get to see the bikes, you get to see some of the equipment, how I do some of my organization or lack thereof. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and I appreciate you coming by. Thanks for swinging through and checking out my garage. Ride safe.